Hey guys, Patrick R with TAP TV, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about my pen here. Well, actually, this thing is a gun. Uh, this is a Braverman Stinger, and this one's chambered a 22 long rifle. And they made these things in a whole bunch of calibers, like 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, uh, even more popular calibers like 380 and uh, 32. Now, kind of fun is uh, the 380 conversion that you bought for these things. Uh, if it broke the gun, Braverman would no longer warranty it because they pretty much told you that it was going to break. Um, so I don't think that was a real popular option. Now, you do have that safety right there, which uh, it engages every time you close the pistol back into the pen configuration. Now, to reload this thing, you unscrew the chamber entirely, just like that and then drop another 22 long rifle in there. Now, obviously this thing's not very accurate and probably his recommended use is to stick it into the uh, some, some orifice of your attacker and pull the trigger or um, you know, as an assassination tool or something like that. But if you look at this thing, it's, it, I mean, it's obvious this isn't a pen, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, maybe if they had some sort of cap or something, um, you know, it might pass for a pen. Um, so, I mean, we're probably not gonna hit a whole lot of stuff with it today, but uh, it will be a lot of fun to shoot because seriously, who gets a chance to shoot a pen every day? I mean, it, I don't. All right, uh, let's load up some Ventura Munitions ammo. Thanks to those guys for sending some ammo over uh, that'll work on this thing, um, and we'll have a good time. All right, so the Braverman Stinger is, uh, like I said, it's a pen that's also a gun. But uh, we were fooling around with it, trying to figure out how everything works, what ammo it likes, what ammo it doesn't like, and uh, learned that it is really, really picky about how you treat it. So to turn it into a gun, you take the pen, obviously keeping the muzzle away from you because I'm muzzling you guys right now. That's the barrel, that's the muzzle. Keep the shortest portion of the safety. So there's two sides. You've got a little line on the bottom, and that's the bottom of the pistol. And then on the top, it's got that kind of point here at the back, and you'll see that in just a second. Pull it all the way out, bend it over as far as it'll go, and then now you have your gun. Now, in order to disengage the safety, you rotate that collar, and now it's off safe. I mean, you can't hit anything, because it has no sights at all. So, what I found really interesting is you have to cock the gun. It has to be cocked in order to get the barrel off, which means you need to cock it like that, get the barrel off, obviously, and then you can use the gun itself to kind of pry the case out maybe. I might have to break out my pocket knife because it's a little bit on the tight side and I'm going to have to do that. So there's no extractor on this thing either. As I drop the barrel. So you have to kind of get in there and get that uh, case out. So now that we have the case out, I can load it up again. It's not exactly like a fast shooting firearm. So now we got another round, slide that into the chamber. Obviously be careful not to muzzle ourselves as soon as it's on the gun. So now technically this should be, um, you know, like okay to just pull the trigger. It should, it should be cocked and ready to go. Technically, we'll, we'll see. It may do its little not shooty thing. Yep, see? Now, the only way we found to fix that is to re-cock it all the way and then... Yep. It's a very deliberate movement to unfold this thing. And I don't know if there's something wrong with this or, um, you know, if I'm doing something incorrectly, because we don't have the manual for it, unfortunately. So we're gonna recock it, make sure the safety's on, unscrew the barrel, any day, take out my pocket knife, pry the case out, not cut myself. Just like that. And then I can reach in my pocket and get my reload and take my second shot of my other assailant. So this isn't, isn't a self-defense weapon. This is obviously something that was designed with assassination in mind. Um, so now that it's on the gun, like it's loaded back up again, 
Uh, I don't think even if I were, I mean, maybe if I were a spy, this makes sense. Uh, if I were just somebody that wanted to, to kill somebody, like assassinate somebody, I don't think that I would do that. And uh, there are a whole bunch of other guns out there that are probably better for the job. Um, like, you know, it being a pen gun is cool and all, but like I said, it doesn't really serve a practical purpose. Out here at the range, it is a lot of fun though, so if it works, like it didn't that time. And it's probably because I didn't take the safety off. I'm gonna rotate the collar. Now, hey, missed the target again at 20 yards. All right, so the pen gun looks sort of penny, not really. You fold it open, and in order to load it, you have to unscrew the chamber. So that comes all the way off. Then you take your 22 long rifle slide it into the chamber. Obviously don't muzzle yourself at this point because it's now loaded. Rethread that in place. Now if you were to want to carry it, you could fold it back down just like that or shoot it, maybe if it'll work. Nope. Let's try that again. Wow. So this is doing a couple of things whenever the trigger is pulled. Now I'm gonna hold it in place. Uh, and we've got a uh, fired case in there. But when you pull the trigger on this thing, which means push the trigger to the rear, it's actually dropping the whole thing down just a touch. So it's cocked there. And it actually just drops down just a touch. And like if I hold it still, you can see the movement of the barrel. So like any type of practical accuracy is just completely gone. Do it one more time so you guys can see that. So, I mean, the barrel is, is like not fixed at all and there are no sights. So hitting anything is just impossible. But, uh, so I'm gonna stop shooting this because I'm getting tired of pulling things out of the uh, chamber with a, uh, pocket knife. So uh, let's go finish up talking about the uh, Braverman pen gun. All right, guys, so that is the Braverman Stinger. Now, street price on these things is right about a grand. So if you happen to find one, you'll be glad to know it's not an AOW, it's not an NFA item. This is just a standard pistol because it changes configuration. And as far as we're aware, this is the only one that does that. It's the only one that folds out into a handgun. So. If you find one, you can buy it without a tax stamp. It's not illegal to own. Uh, the ones that stay in the pen configuration and then they fire, those are the ones that are AOWs and they require a $5 tax stamp and a waiting period that the ATF determines, uh, which is usually like a lifetime. So just pick up a Braverman Stinger. And if you're looking for one, head on over to ProxyBid, check them out. They might have one because they do a lot of really rare and strange firearms. Uh, and this would definitely fall into that category. Anyhow, thanks to the guys over at SRAM Auto Weapons for uh, letting me borrow the uh, Braverman Stinger, and uh, we'll see y'all later. Bye.